Dr. Jay and Hotep, my sisters and brothers, Hotep. I hope you don't mind if I sit back, lay back, and talk to you. Resistance, armed resistance. That's what we're about. We have been about, as Africans, from the very beginning when contact was made with us by Europeans. It is very important sometimes, or most times, to bring back to our minds, to refresh our minds, or to retell ourselves certain things that happened with our ancestors so that we can get a bead, get the feeling of what we're going to do to release ourselves from the condition in which we are. This year is a very good year to remember African resistance in this hemisphere because it marks the 200th anniversary of the Haitian Revolution. And there is an exhibition going around the country given by a Haitian organization and also in conjunction with the Smithsonian Institution. And it's says 1791-1991, salute to Haiti, 200th anniversary since Bookman's ceremony of the Bois Caiman. You notice what it says, Bookman's ceremony, because let us understand this. Whatever we do as Africans, we do it in a spiritual and ceremonial way. That is why we begin with libations. When we call forth those very ancestors to be able to talk to us and give us their knowledge because we need their knowledge in this continuous link that we have with them. Tonight, this evening, in this room, we have the ancestors, Bookman especially, here with us. We have Zumbi, <coughs> we have Desaline, we have Christoph, we have them all. And I'm sure they'll be telling us that we have to struggle and keep on struggling. They never gave up, none of them. And it is to them that we owe our being here today. But for those brave, powerful people, we would not be here. The great brother Ahmed Sekaturi made a statement and said, wait not for the fit and the fittest of our African men and women we today would not survive. So since we have survived, we have a spiritual duty to perform. And that duty is to keep on in the mood and in the pattern set for us by those ancestors. In other words, we cannot take a holiday from struggle. We cannot say 
that the 1960s, there was a civil rights movement. And there was a lapse after that. Everything went dead. And we've picked it up again. That does not make sense. The ancestors didn't have a lapse at all and pick up anything. They continued from the beginning right up until they died and went to our spiritual ancestors. And this is the message, if there is a message at all, that this past tells us. It is not to show how great our ancestors performed these magnificent deeds. It is to tell us, to show us, that we must continue in their paths. Unfortunately, whatever caused that, one can only try to imagine. But we have not really lived as the ancestors wanted us to live. For every 24 hours of their day, and the day was not a pleasant day at all. It was never pleasant. All hours of the day they were conscious of one thing, that they were Africans. And they had to do something about liberating themselves from the terrible tangles in which Europeans had placed them. They fought from the beginning. Let me, I like to use quotations. I like to tell you from the pages of those who have researched and done work when the struggle began. Black resistance, this thing is called, chapter is called, but it's African resistance. Listen to a paragraph of this resistance. When it started, and I'm quoting, adjustment to the conditions of the slave plantation did not mean acceptance of servitude by the African. His struggle for freedom began on the day of his enslavement. The Africans along the West African coast, every barracoon had its fort, every slave market its whipping block to check rebellious spirits. At sea, the captain of a slave ship knew he had trouble on his hands. One of them, James Barbot, part owner of the Albion, gives an account of a slave mutiny. They suddenly fell upon our men and stabbed one of the stoutest. Many of the most mutinous leapt overboard and drowned themselves with much resolution. showing no manner of concern for life. And this is what that kept happening all the time. Many people give accounts of these rebellions at sea. When the ship was leaving Africa, they began from that moment, in point of fact, when they were in those barracoon hell holes, they began it there. He said, um, uh, Captain Messervy says, he warned his men that they always go first for the chief person on the ship. Slave mutiny.